All right, I'm back. It's been a few weeks. Work uh, has been crazy. Switching the kids from winter sports to now spring sports has been crazy. Uh, so I haven't had a lot of time uh, to do this. Uh, but in the last couple weeks, I've had a number of people come up to me and ask me, hey, Matt, how do I do this bear hunting thing? Like, how do I bear hunt in Wyoming? Um, I'm not super knowledgeable on it, but I have picked up a lot of things, some tips, some pointers, um, and hopefully I can drop some knowledge on you this morning um, in reference to that. I've got the Game and Fish website up. That's going to help us. Um, but yeah, there are a few key factors when it comes to bear hunting. And it's March, so everyone's crazy about it, right? Today's March 19th. This video will probably post tomorrow, the 20th. Um, and that is critical because the 21st is a very important date for those folks who want to bait. Wyoming is one of those states that allows baiting. Idaho is another one out west. Um, basically, you get an entire square mile all to yourself uh, to put one bait on. In total, a resident, well, anyone, can have two of those square miles, so two baits. Now, the only difference is with outfitters, they get uh, a few more because they, not a few baits per square mile, but a few more square mile grids because uh, it's their job, right? Um, those baits and those sites uh, they use to produce, uh, produce income. So they have a number of clients, all different people who will use a larger number of sites. So anyway, you get the point. So yeah, so the first thing we really need to talk about is do you bait or do you spot and stalk? So I've done both in Wyoming. I haven't had any success spot and stalk hunting. The only bears I've run into are, are during elk season when I'm carrying a bow. Not that that's a bad thing, um, but I was completely unprepared and I didn't know what the quota was. Um, I'll talk about the quota in a little bit. Uh, so I also went, there was an old video of me getting my truck stuck. I thought I almost was going to die. Um, west of Big Piney uh, in the Wyoming range. And it was really two days of spot and stock. Didn't see any bear, saw some sign. That part of Wyoming has a lot of bears. In fact, the game warden out of Star Valley manages like 290 bait sites. Something phenomenal like that. Uh, it's, uh, I think his region has the most bear sites of any other region. Um, so I thought, hey, there's bound to be a lot of bears out there. There's a lot of open country. The only thing we saw was bear sign. We saw some scat the evening of our last day. Um, I think we might have had a bear nearby, uh, huffing and, and tranching through the forest, but it was hot midday, and uh, we were sitting in the sage, and the north-facing slope was timbered. I think that's where he was. That's the closest that maybe I've ever been, um, minus the one time in 2015 I had a sow and a cub when I woke up from a nap. Naps are critical when you elk hunt, FYI. Um, so yeah, so that spot and stock has not been really successful. Now baiting, uh, I've had a little more success with. In 2015, um, I was able to get a lot of bear activity, sows and cubs, boars. Uh, in fact, I had a bear come in on me when I had my rifle um, and I missed him through the trees. He was walking through the trees, tight timber, uh, and I, I'm fairly certain I struck a tree uh, with my with my bullet um, but since then I have uh, learned kind of dialed it in and I think this year is going to be the most successful so 2015 I had a shot uh, 2016 2017 2018 I did some things different uh, 2019 a couple of those years I didn't hunt uh, 2020 we had that big fire uh, in the snowies and that fire uh, covered from one end to the other all the way to Albany and that's where my bear site was so like I said I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you today um, and if I haven't said it get get a pencil and paper because these are things you're gonna want to know um, but my bear site burned up basically um, so that wasn't so I've been looking ever since for a new site last spring I had a new site in the Madres two sites actually neither one of them was successful um, so again, 
uh, I learned from it um, and took that experience and I'm bringing it into this season. Uh, so without further ado, there are a couple things you need to know to be successful in Wyoming. Um, and FYI, at the end of that spot and stock trip uh, two years ago, the myself and the gentleman I was with were talking about how much we wanted to bait bear and how much hiking around for nothing sucked. So in some states, it can be productive. In Wyoming, it's really, spot stock is really productive if you're doing something else. Like if you're looking for elk, if you're looking for deer in the fall. In fact, a lot of folks in the Wyoming range and Salt River range on the west side of the state, they run north south, um, have success bear hunting while they're deer hunting. They're not really out there for bear or elk hunting, um, at least according to the game warden and Big Piney. So anyway, I've talked to Big Piney, Jackson, and Star Valley, and I've gotten a lot of great information from them. Um, so if you want to spot and stalk, actually where I was is not the best area. Um, the west side of the Tetons is the best. I'll say again, the west side of the Tetons is your best bet for spot and stock. That's a really far drive from where we're at. I didn't feel like going that far. Uh, so we went west of Big Piney, got my truck stuck, saw no bear, yada, yada, yada. So um, that you come in, I think you go to Jackson, go southwest and then back up and you can only get into Wyoming about a mile before you're snowed out in the spring. You get out of the truck and hike up the drainages to do that. But that is literally a really good area for spot and stock. So again, coming home from that trip where we got my truck stuck, all we could talk about was how much we wanted to uh, uh, bait <laughs> because that's way too far to go for a weekend or a day. Um, and down here, it's easier. It's, it's just easier to bait. You can go out, you know, for a couple hours, scout, drop your bait, come back to the house, uh, so on and so forth. So, um, if you do want to spot stock, I recommend that one section of the state. Otherwise baiting is probably your best bet. So the first thing where I was, I got off on a tangent. The first thing you want to do is find a bait site right a couple things you need to know about to, uh, when looking for a bait site but let's go on uh, the game and fish website and look at um what sites really are avail available and we'll also talk about why today and tomorrow and monday are so important okay so we'll go to trophy game go down to bear black bear map um it'll load okay this is the map of sites that are that are reserved so you need to understand when you look when you start baiting you need to look at the map of sites that are already claimed okay tomorrow sunday probably when you view this the 20th is the last day to reclaim sites from last year i'm not reclaiming my site also to claim your site you have to, once you claim your site, you have to give the GPS coordinates to game and fish of your bait. If you do not do that, remember you get one bait per square mile, two square miles total. If you do not do that, you don't get to reclaim your site the next year. I didn't do that. I didn't have any luck. We'll talk a little bit about that. But, so I'm looking for new sites. I would be looking for new sites anyway. It's irrelevant. So go to the bait map, Black Bear bait map, uh, and this used to, FYI, be one lady, very nice lady, in the Laramie Game and Fish that held a paper map that had the secrets to all the baits. And you had to, like, sneak photos, and it was a little ridiculous. Um, now it's all electronic, thank goodness. So we'll zoom in. Uh, we're looking for where I hunt. I'm looking at the Madres and the Snowies, okay? Looking for sites that aren't already claimed. Now, people have until tomorrow at midnight to claim their sites. So really, I'm not, I don't, I'm not even eligible to claim one until the 21st. So the 21st to the 28th is when you, the new bear bait hunter, want to get in on uh, claiming your bear bait site as soon as possible. That said, there may be some good sites after that period, and you really can claim it, I think, anytime in the spring, summer, but for the fall season, but uh, it behooves you to do it in the next week, okay? 
Okay, so we're going to zoom out. Okay, Madres, uh, here's another knowledge nugget for you, knowledge bomb. The Madres generally have the best bear baiting in the state. I say again, Region 9, the Madres, has the highest harvest, best bear hunting in the state. So, the Madres are really good. Am I going to bait in the Madres? I don't know. Um, the snowies are closer. Uh, I like the snowies. I did go in there in December. You might have seen some videos on my Instagram of me being in there. Um, it is burned quite a bit, but it's starting to green up, right? Uh, my former site in Albany, just north of Albany, uh, wasn't overly productive. It wasn't productive after that first year. So there you go. Blah. It's just, I don't know. Um, so let's look at the Madres. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try and get you to be able to see this. Uh, let me tilt this for you. Okay. Now, we'll do this like that, I think. Okay, so those gray sites, those gray blocks are all sites that have been reclaimed. And again, people have until tomorrow at midnight. What you are looking for in a bear bait site is this. Southeast facing slopes for the spring especially. Now, that bait is probably going to hunt differently uh, in the spring than it does in the fall, right? So, for instance, my baits were terrible last spring. They might have been great in the fall, but in the fall, I had a mountain goat hunt. I had my dad's elk hunt. I had my own elk hunt. I had a deer hunt. It just wasn't going to happen. So, um, so I really look forward to spring bear because in the fall, I'm not going to really uh, do much in the in the fall. Um, so I've mentioned a couple things. One, the quota. Each region, uh, the Snowies is eight, the Madres is nine, has a quota of uh, or a female mortality rate. So every time a sow, not a boar, every time a sow or female bear is shot, that takes away from the harvest quota. And once the harvest quota is filled, um, they close the region. The Madres, I think last year, spring and fall, filled the quota for both seasons. So Let's take a look uh, at a rando site down the southern end of the Snowies. Why? Because there's a highway that goes right through there and it's relatively accessible. And you see all these sites are have been reclaimed. Uh, there'll be more today and finally tomorrow. Uh, but if you want... So, okay. So here we are. This is Pelton Creek. Um, I want to get in there so you can see it. Okay. I'm not going to touch it again. That's Pelton Creek, okay? So it's important because it dead ends. It ends at the, the wilderness, the North Platte uh, wilderness. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of beautiful country in there. If it's good, I don't know. Because that fire, remember, swept across the snowies. It didn't cross 230, but it did uh, affect this area in certain spots. So we have uh, identified an area on the map where there are sites. There's also a road that goes up it, okay? you. Here's another knowledge bomb. You only have to be 200 yards from a stream, 200 yards from a road, 200 yards from camping. If I remember those regs by heart, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it is. That's not very far. So you don't have to be three miles back in the wilderness or three miles back in the woods up the top of a mountain to fight like you might for elk hunting or deer hunting to find bear. It is not necessary. I have friends that hunt uh, within <laughs> within just barely 200 yards of the road, of their truck, and they have bear on their bear, bear bait. So do not think that you have to be miles and miles back there or even a mile. My that In 2015, I was a mile from my truck. It was a hike with all my gear a mile in and we're not talking just a little bit dog food syrup things that are heavy it was a nightmare okay so now let's go to google earth right um let me type in earth real quick uh, and we're going to the next thing we're going to do is take a look now this isn't accurate with the these don't have the recent uh, cuttings, timber cuttings, and they don't have the recent uh, fires that have happened, but they do have, uh, it will give you a pretty good general idea 
of what that country looks like wherever you're at, right? So let's zoom in on Pelton Creek. Um, here's another nice thing. I like bear sites to overlap with areas that I'm gonna do other kinds of hunting in. So if I learn that country, I might it might help me with deer, it might help me with elk, it might, not antelope, but it might help me with those other species. Um, the east side of the snowies, I, I don't, I've never elk hunted or deer hunted that area, and I don't intend to. The west side of the snowies uh, is southwest corner 78. They, I think they have 150 tag quota, and it is very, it can be very, very good deer hunting. It's a draw. Uh, the odds are about 25%, I think, for draw odds. Um, but this is the Platte River Valley. The other side for deer is 81, and those odds are about 40%. Um, these are good deer areas because they border Colorado, and when Colorado's high mountains get hit with snow, those deer migrate, and that this is along the migration route for those big bucks. Uh, knowledge bomb. Okay. Um, so this is Pelton Creek Campground. The end of that road is the wilderness. So you park there, you can hike in, you can camp in the parking lot or parking area, um, or the campground area. Um, and go in from there. There's areas you can uh, branch out from. Uh, but we were looking at southeast facing slopes, right? Um, this is the west side of the road and all those slopes face to the east. So timbered slopes that face the east. Um, okay, so we'll look at uh, this site. This site is literally taken, but um, if you go back here, it is this site up in the upper left. Um, okay, this is what you're looking for. Here's the slope. Okay, so the road's right here. It's on the right side of the creek, so you don't gotta walk through the stream to get there. Um, this slope is facing south, southeast, which is where the sun hits first, which is where the snow melts first every spring. Where the snow melts first, there's more green, more access, and um, of more bear activity. So that's kind of where you want to put your bait. So that's one example. Now let's look in the Madres. Okay. So let's go over oh, Black Hall. Okay, here's Hog Park, right? I think you can see that there. Okay. The west side of the Encampment River Wilderness, all of those slopes face the southeast. Um, Let's look, let's pull the bear map out, zoom out and then, and then zoom back in. Ooh, gosh darn it, sorry. Okay, so here you have sites up at the top, the north end of the Encampment River Wilderness, and then the south end there aren't any. Likewise, uh, and it's right off the main road down to Hog Park. Again, accessible country, okay? That's what you're looking for. So, these gray sites, anything gray by the midnight tomorrow is claimed. Anything uh, blank is free for the taking, okay? Uh, you want to claim the site. So, buy your bear tag. You can buy it online. That's the first thing you want to do. And then go into the system at the, on the 21st and claim a site. If you're in this part of the state, right. If you're in this part of the state, Snowies and the Madres are kind of are a good bet. It's a good area to be in. If you're in the Northwest or the North, the Bighorns, the, all those things still apply. The dates, all those things still apply. The dates still apply. What you're looking for in the area still applies. But you have to buy your bear team, buy it online, and go to Sportsman's. You can go to, uh, if you're in Buffalo, you can go down Main Street uh, to the Sportsman store, um, sporting goods store, uh, wherever, whoever sells your tag. Get your tag and then um, go online and do that today, tomorrow, soon, right? Because you have from the 21st to the 28th. After that, you and you apply for up to six sites and you'll get two of them. Um, and if you don't want to hunt them, you just don't hunt one of them. If you only want to hunt one of them, you only hunt one of them. Now, 
what you're going to bring in for bait. Okay, I use 50 gallon, 55 gallon drums, plastic blue drums, and I'll I'll put a picture in there. Um, you can use as for bait. You want to cut a big hole in it and a big hole in the top to serve as your uh, funnel to get stuff in there. Um, my first year that I was successful, I used dog food, syrup, donuts, um, bear scent wicks with the bears dipped in bear scent, and the bear bomb. The little can, you let it go, it releases. I have never repeated that in the last seven years. And just this year I realized, holy cow, that's, that's probably what did it, right? I had a lot of scent, I had donuts, which are very sweet, and I really like them. If you don't want to use dog food because it weighs, it's not expensive, it just weighs a ton, uh, use popcorn. Uh, you can make popcorn in a turkey fryer and make it in bulk, or you can buy the big bags and Sam's. I have a whole shelf of uh, two 30-gallon garbage bags full of that popcorn from Sam's. So I'll start with that. And FYI, the popcorn's very light, so you don't have to carry all that weight at back there. But the maple syrup is really good. Here's another thing that's really good is uh, ranch powdered dressing or a flavored powder dressing. It comes in a big bottle, it's all powder. You just dump it all over the bait bucket and in the surrounding area. It'll blow in the breeze, it'll create a smell. The donuts work very well, at least they did. I'm gonna do it again uh, in, a couple of, in a couple weeks here. Um, so that's the other thing. Um, this year I bought uh, like deer cane, this like 500 more, 500 times sweeter than sugar. Um, I'm going to use the syrup, I'm going to use the popcorn, I'm going to use the donuts, I'm going to use the ranch dressing, the bear bomb, the bear sand, all of that. Um, and I, I did a lot of that in the spring. And I told you I wasn't successful. North end of the Madres, those slopes faced the north. None of them faced southeast or south. And I think that was a big part of my problem. The other part is the time of year. The, what I Near where my bear baits were, uh, a friend was elk hunting, and while he was elk hunting in the fall, uh, he had a sow and a cub walk up to within 20 yards of him. That So the north end of the Madres has a lot of bear, and he had, you know, shoot, get out of here, get out of here, he's freaking out. Uh, and he was sitting in a clearing, so it wasn't like it was in the timber and you couldn't see anything, there were down trees everywhere. No, it was in a clearing. So there are bears in there. But the spring, I don't think, is the right time to be hunting that, at least not on a north-facing slope, right? Um, so that's something you want to do. You want to put a trail camera up there so you can monitor the activity. Um, and here's like kind of the last piece of advice. May 15th is when those boars are going to start to bust out of the dens and start looking for sows and looking for food. Their rut is really, I think, the you know officially might be the end of april or april until june so when they bust out of those dens they're looking to breed and they're looking to eat so you, it happens around here it happens right about may 15th um once once you start getting that um that activity you'll see that pretty soon it's not three or four bears at once it'll be like a sow and a cub or a sow and two cubs then there won't be anything. Then it'll be a boar. They kind of then it'll be uh, at night. Maybe the boar comes back, but early morning it's just the sow and the cub. They will establish a uh, dominance and they will establish sort of a hierarchy at that bait. And it happens within a week or two. Okay, so this is literally like everything I know about bear baiting that I'm going to use personally <laughs> the next couple months. So I hope this helps you. Um, but remember, if you want a spot in stock. Okay, west part of the Tetons, west side of the Tetons. It is busy up there. There are other guys spotting, uh, doing spot and stock. Um, and there are grizz up there, uh, but it's, it's pretty obvious. The game warden didn't seem too worried about grizz and people um, you know, hunting, in, uh, hunting during daylight hours. Um, the, other th it, it, the other thing is, the deadline is, Monday, is Sunday at midnight. So Monday morning, get on there and claim your sites. Uh, pick sites, pick up to six, and then when they uh, when they release them early April, you'll find out where your bear baits are. 
They can be near a road, they can be near a river, 200 yards, 200 yards legally, 200 yards in those, within those, but they can be very easily accessible. That's not far, right? 200 yards is not, that's literally what I sight my rifle in for. It is not far, it's a walk. It's an easy walk. Um, you also want to uh, use popcorn, it's very light, but the donuts work, uh, syrup, the ranch dressing, um, deer cane, we'll see if that does anything. Um, also, you want to think about, um, shoo, you want to think about, sorry, my kids. Um, also, you want to think about uh, to when that May 15th period, when those bears are, boars are going to be busting out, you want to make sure you have bait on there. You want to make sure you're especially monitoring your site during that period. You can't use cell phone cameras, uh, game cameras. Those are illegal now in Wyoming. Um, but you can be checking your bait regularly or plan to take a couple days or a day of vacation during that week to get in there and make sure you're having some activity. Um, what else is there? I think that's about it. I, I've i covered a lot. Uh, oh, in the dominance. You know, within a week, they'll probably... Uh, establish a hierarchy and dominant who's more dominant than the other bear and so on and so forth i wish you all the all success in the world um i really hope this works out i hope this helps you it's a very long video i apologize there's just so much to talk about with spring bear and now i you know when people ask i kind of give them all this stuff uh tree stand versus on the ground if you're on the ground uh in 2015 that bear that was walking through the trees and i missed i was laying on the ground i was taking a nap and at 5.30 in the evening, he came out. Um, a lot of outfitters specifically will only hunt like 2 or 3 o'clock until dark um, because that's when those boars seem to be more active is in the evening versus sows and cubs more active in the morning. Um, so that's something else for you. Um, but yeah, I was on the ground. I was not in my tree stand. I had my tree stand set up, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to lay down. I'm tired of going to the tree stand. And that bear walked like right in on me. We scared each other, and that's when he was walking through the trees uh, around the site, around the bear bait to come into the bear bait at a different, a different point. I fired, scared him away, and didn't get anything. So um, that's the thing. Remember those kinds of bait. Remember where, what to look for, uh, overlap with deer and elk seasons. Uh, or areas. Uh, the Platte River Valley is very good for deer. In fact, according to the biologist, uh, you'll get as much, uh, as many 200 inch deer in that area as you will the Wyoming range where all the record deer are from. So think about that. Uh, other than that, I, that's all I have guys. Thank you. Be sure to like and subscribe. Sorry my kids interrupted. Get on here and look at the sites that are available now and then to March 21st to the 28th, you'll know really what you're looking for. Okay? Thanks a lot. Bye.